Hi, welcome to a new session of Circuits and Networks. In today's class, we are going to see gear related problems, especially asked in 2024 under Triple paper. So we are going to focus only on analytical circuit problems. Here you can see a two-port network is connected in cascade and how the question is framed for a two marks problem. That is what we are going to see in this session. Apart from this, we also see some of the basic numericals such as first example, you can see a circuit is given over here. All the elements in the circuits are idle. Okay. The power delivered by 10 volt source in watts is, this was asked for one mark and the options were given like this ABCDs, that is 100, 0, depending upon the value of alpha and 50. So how to solve this kind of problem? First of all, you take the circuit as it is and mark a node voltage as V, assuming this node to be at higher potential so that when I am going to apply KCL over this particular node, I can easily frame the branch currents uh, that is on left side on the denominator and on the right side like this. So you have a branch current I alpha, which is nothing but V minus 10 by alpha. Then you have another branch current V by one and you have a source current, which is acting as a branch current over here. So when you're going to apply this case here, you're going to get this equation. Taking like terms and unlike terms on one side and other side, I'm going to get V, which is equal to 10 volts. Now once V is obtained, I can easily obtain the value of current I alpha, that is nothing but 10 minus 10 by alpha, which is nothing but 0 amperes. So in fact, this 10 volts would be delivering uh, power, which is nothing but uh, equivalent to V into I. So V is 10 volts and I is 0. Therefore, power de delivered by this 10 volts is 0 watts. So option B is the right answer. In the next question, you can see, uh, it is also asked in gate 2024 for one mark. Uh, the switch shown in the figure with S open is in steady state and after the switch is closed, the time constant of the circuit in seconds. Options are given as 1.5, 1.25, 0 and 1 second. So how to solve this problem? Again, you take the circuit as it is uh, with uh, switch closed and remove this current source. So when you do like this, you're going to get the circuit like this. Okay. And you have to look into the solution by looking into the switch position like this. And you can see here, we have a uh, one Henry, one Henry connected in parallel that is in series with one Henry, right? And that combination is again in series with one Henry. So I can get the value of L equivalent and R equivalent. So R equivalent will be one plus one and L equivalent will be one plus one plus parallel combination of this one and one. So this is how you need to solve this problem. So L equivalent, I'm taking the value, uh, which is nothing but the parallel combination of these two Henry's in series with one and one. So it becomes 2.5 Henry's and R equivalent equal equal to two ohms. Finally, the time constant is given by L equivalent by R equivalent. So this 2.5 by two will give you the value as 1.25 seconds. So in your past gate exam also, you must have seen these kind of problems related to R connected with inductor or R connected with capacitor. So please focus on these kind of problems. So option B is the right out over here. In the next problem, the number of junctions in the circuit is dash. So you need to find out the nodes. So you, you can see the network, oh sorry, the circuit is connected in this fashion and the options are given as eight, six, seven and nine. So which is the right option? We have to look into the node conditions first. So let me mark the nodes. I'm taking this one as node one, node two and node three are marked on the top, node four, node five are marked in the bottom and node six, you can see, over here and over here are sharing the common terminal because there is no uh, element connected between this node and this node. That's why I have marked these six as the common nodes. So here, uh, no element implies it becomes a common node. So practically you have six nodes. So option B is the right answer. Then, Two passive two port net networks P and Q are connected in uh, figure show. The impedance matrix of network P is ZP, that is 40 ohms, 60 ohms, 80 ohms, and 100 ohms. The admittance matrix of the network Q is 5 Siemens minus 2 point Siemens minus 2 point 5 Siemens, 1 Siemens, or in MOS you can say. And let A, the ABCD matrix of the two port network be R, which is uh, shown in this figure. The common 
uh, the two-port network is listed as R, and it is nothing but uh, elements which are present in R are alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. We need to find out the value of beta in ohms, and we have to round it out to two decimal places. Okay, first you take the data as it is. So I have taken the first the impedance matrix and admittance matrix, and the easy way to remember the formulas which we have derived in our past classes. The derivation from one parameter to other parameter. As a result, you need to remember uh, the z that is impedance in terms of other parameters. So impedance parameters are given by this uh, matrix which is shown over here. So if I want to find out the y parameters, then y is equal to inverse of this impedance parameters that is one by delta z of uh, just uh, change the positions of z11 and z22, and you have to take uh, the minus over the transfer uh, parameters. Otherwise, you can have A, B, C, D parameters uh, in terms of Z parameters like this. 1 by Z21, Z11, Delta Z1, Z22. And H parameters, if at all you require, the formula changes to 1 by Z22, Delta Z1, Z12, and minus Z21. Please remember these formulas. Uh, the problem uh, you can solve, any problem you can solve with the help of this uh, matrix conversions. So better you remember all the Z parameters in terms of uh, Y parameters, ABCD parameters and H parameters. Then it will be easy for you to solve any kind of problem. Anyhow, we have to make use of this formulas in order to solve these kind of problems. So how to use this? First, I take, I'm going to take the Z parameters like this. I'm going to calculate Delta Z, which is obtained over here as minus 800. So this I'm treating as equation 6. Then ABCD parameters in terms of Z parameters are obtained with this formula. So I'm treating first ZP as T1 uh, ABCD parameters. So according to the formula, I'm taking 1 by uh, Z21 AT outside and 40 and 100 are kept as it is. And the delta Z you obtained as value minus 800, so that is kept as it is. And 1 it is taken outside, that's why the value is 1 kept as it is. So with this, I'm going to get uh, T1, which is 0.5 minus 10, 0 0.0125 and 1.25. And this I'm treating as equation 7, OK? Just follow what I'm trying to say over here. Uh, later on, you can interpret the result. So from equation two, you know that y parameters, uh, sorry, uh, yes, the admittance parameters is given by this matrix. And when you calculate the delta y, you are going to get minus 1.25. Uh, once the value is obtained, I'm again calculating the impedance parameters from admittance parameters. So with the standard formula, I can change these values. So I'm going to get the value of impedance from admittance value as minus 0.8, minus 2, minus 2, minus 4. So this I'm treating as equation 9 and this I'm treating as equation 8. And finally, I'm taking the transmission line parameters 2. That is again obtaining uh, ABCT parameters from Z parameters. So again taking this the help of this formula, which is shown over here, and getting the values of T2 in this fashion. You can see we have obtained the value of T2, transmission line parameters as 0.4.4. Minus 0.5 and 2. After doing this equation as 10, we are going to cascade transmission line parameters, which is given by this formula t equal to t1, t2. So take, take these two matrices, that is matrix which is present in 7, multiply with uh, matrix 10. So the resultant would be that is taken as the value of r or t, what we say we are going to get as 5.2 minus 19.8 minus 0.625 and 2.505. So this is the values of obtained to be, uh, which are obtained of the cascade connection. And the beta value according to the ohms is obtained as minus 19.8 ohms. Remember, if at all we take delta Z as a modulus value, then it becomes positive 800. Finally, uh, from equation eight, again, you're going to get delta Y, which is positive value as 1.25. And T1, T2 matrices are going to change with some positives and negative symbols. And you're going to get the value of beta with 20.2 ohms. But instead of this, I have taken exact values, what is obtained uh, with delta Z and delta Y. With these two values, I obtain the value of beta is equal to minus 19.8 ohms. You please comment in the chat box whether you got the same answer by your approach or not. And later on, we are going to interpret this result with any other approach. I hope you like this class. Uh, please share among your friends, subscribe to this channel, and please press the bell icon for the future notifications. Thank you.